Hey dad, it's me, Amy. Um, so I acquired a hot tub. We need a little electrical work to get it up and running. And um, as you can see right now, it's just a cat bed. Okay, dad to the rescue. In this project, we're gonna run wires from the main uh, panel to a ground fault circuit interrupter disconnect for the jacuzzi or hot tub and then from there to the hot tub itself. Later in the video we will uh, go over the correct wiring of the GFCI disconnect. The hot tub requires a 50 amp service which means we'll be running number six wires for the neutral and two hot leads and 10 gauge for the ground. By code, we could use three quarter inch conduit, but six gauge wire is pretty uh, thick and doesn't bend that easy. So we're gonna use one inch conduit to make life a little easier when we have to pull the wire. So here's the general layout. The spa is on the uh, northwest corner of the patio and the main power uh, panel with the meter is located on the outside south wall or the south uh, west corner of this room. So the plan will be to come up through the wall with one inch flex, transition to thin wall conduit coming across and outside down to the GFI breaker and from there up and over the gate back down along this wall and then we'll transition to a non-metallic uh, flex for the final stretch going into uh, the hot tub control box. So where we're uh, locating the uh, GFI disconnect uh, breaker is line of sight with the hot tub. And this distance is just about six feet. So it's greater than the five feet required. It is line of sight and it's less than uh, the 15 feet. So this is a, a perfect location for that disconnect. If you've seen my video on installing an RV type air conditioner in your home, uh, you may recall that I put this low voltage um, box in to run uh, 12 volts up to the AC and over to the uh, thermostat. And uh, these are the, uh, the small exposed wires that you see here. Along the left side is 110 volts going up to the AC with an outlet for the uh, 110 to 12 volt DC inverter. And along the right side, you'll see the new one inch flex that I ran. <clears throat> you'll also notice that the flex coming out of the um, main breaker box to the right, which uh, is not exposed, uh, coming into this box down and under and back up, uh, goes through over 180 degrees. Uh, so we installed a type C conduit body here so we could pull uh, wires without having to go through any further turns. Now you can see uh, where we transition from the flex to the uh, thin wall conduit over and straight out through the wall on the north side. On the left, you can see the air conditioner that I uh, talked about earlier. Uh, and on the right, you can see that I've added a uh, type T conduit body and that was so I could feed uh, a different circuit to the outlet that is fed by that junction uh, box on the right. Uh, previously, that outlet uh, shared uh, service with a number of other uh, outlets. And I wanted to uh, move it over uh, to a different circuit breaker. Fortunately, running one inch conduit and flex, uh, there was ample room to run the extra two uh, 12 gauge wires to accomplish this. Here you can see we added an LB where the conduit pokes through the wall to keep the conduit close to the wall as it drops down to the GFCI uh, disconnect. A little uh, about 20 degree kink there lines everything up coming out of the GFCI uh, going through a 90 
and then into a, another LB once again uh, to keep the conduit uh, close to the support post and the uh, wall on the other side. You saw those nice bends in the uh, conduit going over the get gate. I should mention that uh, bending one inch uh, conduit is not all that easy and uh, works better as a two-man job. Here you can see I've got the wires pulled uh, all the way from the uh, main panel to the GFCI and from the GFCI over the uh, gate to the LB. And now I'm applying uh, sealant to the threads of the chase nipple to make sure everything is nice and watertight. Okay, let's talk about the ground fault circuit interrupter disconnect. How does it work? <clears throat> well, for a 240 volt system, it compares the one hot side current to the other hot side current. And if they're equal, everything is good. If there's a difference, it assumes that that extra current must be going to ground and trips. However, with a four wire system where we have a neutral also going to the equipment, that's because the equipment is also using 110 volts between one of the hot sides and a neutral. So let's say your 240 volt heater is drawing 20 amps and your 110 volt pump is drawing five amps. Now, one of the hot leads is drawing 20 amps for the heater. The other is drawing 25 amps, 20 amps for the heater and five amps for the pump. There's also five amps in the neutral wire. Now the GFCI looks at the two hot leads and says, there's a five amp difference. But then it looks at the neutral and says, that's five amps also. So as long as they're equal, all's well. In order for all this to work properly, the neutral has to run through the GFCI breaker. That's why the 240 volt GFCI disconnects come with a neutral pigtail that has to be connected to the neutral coming from the main panel. It also has a terminal where the neutral going to the equipment must be attached. In that way, the neutral wire comes from the main panel to a terminal strip in the GFCI box. And from there, it connects to the pigtail, which goes to the GFCI breaker. And then from that terminal, a neutral wire comes from the GFCI to the equipment. One more thing about wiring that is often misunderstood. The neutral and ground wires are connected on the same terminal strip at the main panel service entrance, but that is the only place. All the sub panels, service breakers, outlets, and so on, the neutral is not connected to the ground. Here you can see a 240 volt GFCI breaker with a pigtail that connects to the neutral coming from the uh, main panel and three terminals, each going to the equipment or load. The hot wires on the left and the right, and then the middle one is the neutral wire going to the equipment. Here's another 240 volt GFCI. You can see the pigtail coming out the back, and it looks like it only has two terminals for the hot leads, but actually the third terminal is there. It's hidden underneath, so uh, don't get fooled. It still needs to hook the neutral wire up to the terminal underneath going to the equipment. Here you can see the GFCI disconnect breaker uh, completely wired. The feed coming from the main panel is coming in from the left. The ground wire is green and connects to a terminal strip which is bonded to the metal enclosure. The white wire is the neutral and connects to the terminal strip up above, which is insulated and not connected to the metal enclosure. In other words, it is not grounded. The red and black wires 
are attached to the bus bar. From the GFCI breaker, the pigtail is also connected to the neutral terminal strip above. So the neutral wire coming from the main panel goes to the terminal strip and then through the pigtail to the GFCI. From the ground strip, the green wire also leaves and goes to the equipment at the right side. The two hot leads leave the GFCI go into the equipment on the right side. And harder to see, but that white wire, which comes in from the right and then loops around, comes back, connects to the GFCI underneath to the uh, neutral terminal. So both hot leads and the neutral are connected to this GFCI. Here you can see uh, the wiring at the main uh, service entrance. And once again, you can see the neutral and ground wires are hooked up to the same terminal strip, but only here at the main service entrance. And here's the uh, final wiring at the hot tub control box. All that's left is to flip the switch, let it heat up, and enjoy the tub. Until next time, this is Ron and Amy signing off.